Hey guys, I did my end of the year analysis of my company. Um, as many of you know, I own a marketing company and that one makes most of, if not all my money. If my game store breaks even for a year, I consider that a success. Uh, my game store did not break even this year. We again lost money uh, and it is a lost leader. The way I look at it is we technically didn't really lose that much money if you count inv additional inventory, but we spent money buying that inventory. Now, was it a good price? Yeah, it's not a bad price, but. So I'm gonna talk about individuals. Uh, everyone, their grandmother thinks 2023 will be a very, very bad year for everyone. Um, there is no finance YouTuber who thinks 2023 will not be a recession. And in fact, Joe Biden has stated that 2023 will be a financially difficult time. What does that mean for you as a Magic player? It means you have to be more picky about what products you buy. And I use picky as not for you, the slogan of Wizard of the Coast. Um, you have to make sure that you can, you know, Magic is a gamble. I truly believe opening packs is akin to gambling. It has these same probably receptors in your brain and so on. Again, I'm not going to get into like too much of the psychology or the, the, the science behind it. But I think when you hit a good card, you definitely feel it. And you're like, wow, I hit a good. It's almost the same as when you win some money at a casino and pulling a slot machine. So every pull is on a slot machine. In fact, uh, Lootbox TV on YouTube, they have a series where they're comparing opening sports cards to actually putting the money in a, in a slot machine. So that is definitely a fair compare, in my opinion, a fair comparison or buying a lottery ticket. You know, buying a pack is the same as buying a lottery ticket or a scratch off ticket, right? It's more at scratch off because lottery, you gotta wait a little bit. I think we all who, who at least people who like opening packs like me, I've opened a lot of packs. And one of the reasons I own a store is I, I opened so many packs. I joined so many box breaks. Honest to God, when I did a math one year, it was just easier to stop box breaking and just buy my own store. At one point in time, when I was in California in San Francisco, uh, I was spending probably 15,000 to $25,000 a year on joining box breaks. And remember, this was like pre-boom prices. This was back in 2012, 2013. 2013, 2014, I probably spent that much money on breaking cards and joining breaks. And I never got really any super great hits. I got some okay hits sometimes. But my idea was, okay, so how much money would it cost to actually own a store? Like own, own a store. And so what I found was the distribution contract is at minimal 5,000 a month, 12 month contract, 60,000. And if I could just sell half of that, and if I could have a friend or two friends, my idea was having two friends join me in that venture as kind of partners, but not even, and nobody would need to buy anything. We would just open packs. Now, uh, right now I do have, my best friend is actually, you know, he buys half the packs. So when we do the 5,000 thing, I mean, sometimes he buys more, sometimes he buys less. It depends on what he feels like. But for this contract, I call them and said, hey, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's 6,000 now. Are you okay? Every month I'm gonna buy 3,000 to 6,000 and then you can eat the remainder of it if you want. But if you, there's a month that you can take care of it when I don't have as much cash flow, you know, I'd appreciate that. And he's good, he's down for it. So basically the contract, the way I did the math was the contract would actually save me a lot of money long term and it has. So it's not really about the business making a profit for me. It's just about me not spending that money on box breaking. So there's no, I still watch box breakers because it's very entertaining, but I never spend money on any whatnot. I've never spent a dollar on whatnot, which is crazy because whatnot is an app made specifically for me. So back in the Odin days, I would just be on whatnot probably every day. Today, there's no reason to do it because I can get those boxes back or breaks has for 40% of what they're charging, right? So back to the recession period, you gotta be picky, you gotta be choosy, you gotta do the math. You have to say, hey, Dominator Remaster is a really cool set, but you know, it's kind of risky and there's a lot of reprints. I don't wanna buy that, I'll buy some singles. There are times that gamblers like us, we have to look at ourselves in the mirror and say, hey, 
you know, this could go down a very bad path if I buy like a, a case of this and I keep opening it. Uh, Pokemon is one hell of a gamble. Like it is, you know, because you're looking for that alternative art, Moonbrion, or SP. I mean, it is not fun. <laughs> what can I tell you? It ain't no fun, man. It is not no fun in Pokemon trying to gamble in that game. But at the same time, is it cheaper than going to... So the way I personally rationalize this, and again, this might not be for you, is I would probably lose mo more money playing poker and doing box breaks than owning my store. So as long as you have stop control, which is something that Caroline from Automedia Resource has no idea what stop loss, it's like, hey, this is the point. And I know, I, I know, like, you know, I in a recession period, I know the recession is coming. I put all my employees' salaries, all of them, even the one in the Philippines, which I forgot about <laughs> until recently, uh, and, and my own salary into escrow for the year. So even if we didn't have a single client, we didn't make a single dollar in 2023, everyone would still have enough money for a whole year to figure out what we can do and get new clients. Right now, there's no panic. We have great clients who are doing really well revenue-wise and profit-wise to a lesser extent. The other thing is you got to reduce your expenses. We dropped um, Marin software. It's $5,000 a month and I dropped other software. Uh, surprisingly on Google, we had like 14 emails from other former employees that are no longer employees. And it, Google, I think Google is charging like $14 an email or something like that, or $12 an email, but it's 14 with tax. So even if you remove, um, if you know, you move 10 of those employees and you have only four left, which is how big much I have now, and you go through the emails, it's a little bit time consuming. You save quite a bit of money. You save $120, $140 a month times 12. That's a large, so we've looked at all, I've looked at all these software. I've looked, I put stop losses, right? Um, there are times where you know I'm I'm kind of over my poker addiction. I still watch Hustlers Casino live, but I'm still I'm kind of over my poker addiction right now, which will save me a lot of money. I'm definitely open. I'm definitely over my box. Like when you own a store and you realize like, hey, the backyard breaks is charging ten thousand dollars for a box. I can get for four. Trust me, you ain't you are never going to join a break again. Once, once you have distribution price on, you know, Poke, let's say Pokemon cards, I pay two ten a pack. Well, you know, why would I go and whatnot and pay like five or six dollars a pack? I'm paying two ten a pack, and I'm having a, more fun opening them by myself than a dude. And the dude's got to ship it to me. It's a, a very complicated matter, right? So understand that next year will be very difficult. And if you have problems with gambling, you have problems with self-control, you just put things in, you know, stop losses in place so it doesn't get uh, too bad. Uh, it can get very bad about those stop losses. Uh, and it's important. It's just kind of important to understand that you don't need to buy every product. You should set yourself a monthly magic budget and never go over that. And then just tell, you know, tell a friend or somebody, Hey, you know, I don't want to spend more than $500 or whatever your budget is, $200 in magic cards. So maybe a new set comes and you buy a box and it's fun to open, but you didn't get what you wanted. Well, just finish the off the rest of singles, right? I think next year, given the fact that Magic the Gathering has announced that it's going to print a lot of cards, like a lot, a lot of different sets, right? And they're going to try to be more, they're going to one up. Now that's what my problem is. When you have double masters, you, I mean, the next set has to be called triple masters eventually, because what is better than double masters? And when you have collector's edition, then you have to outdo the collector's edition. You can't continue, like you have to one up every new set. Otherwise people won't buy the new set. They'll just continue to buy the old set because there's more value in the old set than there is in a new set. So you have to do lost legends and you know they have to do a lot of these gimmicks i mean basically they're just marketing gimmicks in my opinion there's not really that much value to putting a lost uh, a legendary a legends card into one out of <laughs> or putting a neon dynasty neon ink card right the card is not even that good now if they put a neon ink with uh, the empress wow imagine the chase on that thing right if they actually put a waifu right and then they put like different ink colors on the waifu it'll be like but it's like a doggo thing. I looked at the card, it's like ugly as hell. I was like, oh, outside of it being rare and stuff, it's just not for me, right? But if they did that for the Empress card, the Wandering Emperor, 
emperor. I, I don't know why I call her empress. The emperor. My God, it would be, it would be very bad for me personally. Anyway, let me know what you guys feel. What is your budget? Do you guys even have a budget? Um, and I will probably be more realistic. You know, I want you guys to think about this financially and just think really hard about how much money you want to spend on Magic 2023 this today. Because if you can follow your budget and you can restrict yourself, and again, not every set will be for you. Okay, you're not gonna go out and buy every box. Um, that's gonna be very bad next year. Now, everyone's finances is different. And this is why I feel like when finance YouTubers give finance advice, it's very bad. Because how do they know how old the person is, you know, and how, how old you are is actually a very good indicator. If you're like 20, 30, 25, and you're just right in the beginning of your career, that's a different person than somebody who's 65. And that's a different person, even for magic players, if you're a teenager and you're making allowance money, or you just started a basic job at Wawa's or like a Denny's, you're not gonna make that much money. And the advice for you would probably be very different from the advice for somebody like me, who owns a business that does really well. So I can't give you advice because I think the advice would be good for some people, but bad for other people. Anyway, let me know in the comments below. Hi guys.